not there's a lot yeah, of you can't plant millions of flowers in a given area, the soil will be exhausted. Exactly. So you have to have a Department of Agriculture that says, here's how you can grow more flowers. This is what we call soil additive. Right. It takes a thousand years to make one inch of topsoil. And the jackasses today build new cities right over it. We would shave the topsoil, put it in soil banks, because we know differently than the old people that used to build right over things. Today, they build a dam to generate power. But fish can't get back to the spawning grounds when you build a dam. So all our dams have stepped areas where the fish can get back up to the spawning grounds. You know what I mean? I mean total planning. Today, we design a dam to produce electricity. In the future, it's an overview. Do you understand the difference? There's no profit in it for anyone but everyone. Yes. My question is, the population today is increasing exponentially. Yes. Okay. I expect it's going to continue that way. Until? Until, until the system collapses. Until the system collapses or, I mean, as long as there's access. We hope to get this film out before the system hits total collapse. If we don't, it'll revert back. But aren't I you saying no you need the collapse in order to have the transition? More than now. If enough people Look into the Venus project. You find out what it's about. You'll find no one gets hurt. We don't want to kill capitalists, communists, anybody. They're all victims of culture. There's no prisons, no police. If you understand what I'm talking about, talk to your friends about it. Look, the Venus project is not perfect. It's just a hell of a lot better than the system today. And it'll get better. And there are no final frontiers, no utopias, no best buildings, no best laptops. Every year they'll change to get better. It's called an emergent society. Today we have an established society. It's fixed and it operates according to certain laws. In the future, all societies will be commanded and tell us how to improve chairs and everything else. Use the mic. I don't know if they can hear you in the back. Okay. Can you hear me back there? We need an emergent society, not an established society, where nothing remains constant. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah. Um, my question is, do you advocate the uh, abolition of forms of punishment in raising children? You're saying you're Spare the rights for the child. I advocate punishment in, in would you advocate, educating ad children? Is that would you the advocate the, yeah, the abolition of punishment? punishment in educating pe children? Well, let me tell you how we educate children. We do not order them to do exercise. We have a big lake in the city, and we have an island in the middle of the lake, 200 feet up with a craft shop where you can make anything free. To get there, you've got to roll a boat. You've got to climb the hill. So let's design it in our environment. So you go to the library, you have to climb a hill, walk through the forest, and, and reach in different directions. That's the way you do it. You don't order kids to stand out there. If you hate exercise, you poison yourself. You know that? So kids would have the motivation to go to the craft shop. You build it in. That's the way nature works. When a fox sees a, a porcupine, it doesn't know what it is. It gets closer and closer until it gets stuck. And later on, it stays away from porcupines. It's the greatest teacher in the world. Chuck, there's a question Yes. I wanted to know what type of procedures or protocols would this project go through if people were to rebel? Because it seems as if this is sort of uh, a culture or some sort of land that for the good of the good. Like It seems like if someone wanted to become a dictatorship, I mean, be, become a dictator, they could if they just somehow get to the machines. Okay. What if a corrupt person wanted to become a dictator and take over the system? Uh, let me say this. First of all, everybody lives well. There are no poor, no hungry people. So any, if you want to take over, what are you taking over? You live in a nice house. You, have a, you don't own anything in the future. You have access to anything like a public library, a television camera, anything you want. It's there for your use. The concept of ownership was good 50 or 100 years ago. Free enterprise is terrific 150 years ago. But today, we have the capability to produce an abundance. Go, go look at your shopping center. 
we can produce everything and you don't have to charge people anymore. But I want to tell you where I got the ideas. This may help you. Wait, can I just, I got well, it. No, 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 let me just answer that. During, they, they think that Hitler swayed, you know, they say that Hitler swayed Germany. Mm -hmm. Well, he couldn't have done that. A dictator couldn't have taken over unless the people in Germany had that value system to begin with. When you have an educated populace, in, in not just in in certain areas, but in a broad range, being a multidisciplinarian, knowing a lot about a lot of subjects, you can't have somebody come up and dictate what they're going to do. They, they would be helped. They would be helped rather than have that ability to sway people. I understand because I uh, I just see this in some sort of way. This they're going to have to be human labor in some sort of way because if someone was to get a hold of the machines, then they have a hold of your resources. They have that machine that makes your food. So if you, if I have the control of the machine that makes your food and you don't eat, that means you build me a castle. I want my house to be bigger than yours. If you have access to everything you need, all the food, health care, <coughs> why do you want to do that? Is there something wrong with the guy's head, you mean? If there is, he's then help. You know, human behavior, the human behavior they do that with our automobiles and airplanes. Human behavior Your airplane centuries has a tendency. Because humans have always lived in scarcity. There's no such thing as human nature. There's human behavior. Say, that's and that's what I said, human behavior. Changed. It's human always be been changed because they've lived in the same deprivation and differential advantage. If you change the environment, you'll get a different behavior. But who's to change the environment? Who's the one to set that standard to change you. the environment? Uh, you uh, understand uh, what I'm talking about. And if you agree that behavior is shaped by culture, <laughs> if you were brought up in the South, you speak with a Southern accent. Do you buy that? I, you never I believe that. that is a, is, is what do you mean by human nature? Our views I'm about not saying human nature. I'm saying human behavior, and I said that from the beginning. It's human behavior that always wants to go better and be on top. Mm -hmm. Who is going to set the standard? Okay. Whoever sets no, the I standard, what you no one whoever sets set the standard, standard though, is right. the one who's in control. That's just you do that for your life, though. You see that? That's just that's that's your life. Life. Why does anyone just want to be at the top? Is that an ego problem? You think? Or why does anyone want to be over another person? I'd rather work with people than over them. If I meet a person that knows less about aircraft, say, I work on aircraft safety devices, and they said in the old days that you can't take a plane out of a flat spin. So I designed wingtips that turn into the spin and took it out. So you learn how to say, I don't know how to take a plane. Out of a flat spin, you'll, say, you'll never be able to make a plane. That language in itself is an ego. Just to say, look, they asked scientists, can you put a man on the moon? And do you know what they said? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? But well, we don't know what man can stand. They said, what do you mean by that? We have to put him in a centrifuge and see where he conks out at nine G's, nine gravities, or six gravities. That means you can't shoot a rocket ship off too fast because the people will die. That's what I mean, I don't know. So they put a guy in a rotor. Then they said, we don't know how to give a guy water in outer space. <coughs> what do you mean? You don't know. Give him a glass of water. If you pull the glass away, the water would remain there and go off in bubbles. So you can't give a guy a glass of water. So you have to put water in like a toothpaste tube and squeeze it and drink it. You see what I mean? <laughs> so that's what man says, I don't know. That's the most difficult people for people to learn I don't know. There are guys today that say, we'll never get to Mars, not in a thousand years. You think that they did make studies of it? No, just their stinking opinion. Just say, I don't know, it's not my field, I don't even know how rockets work. That's honesty. So we say, listen, there's always been automobile accident, and you'll always have automobile accident. Well, this is a pinhead that's not an innovator. But if you're an innovator, there's nothing you don't feel that can be conquered.